Seches Nazir Daf Chaf Dalid begins with a Mishnah, which discusses what happens if a woman takes a vow of Naziris and she sets aside Karbanis, and then her vow of Naziris is cancelled by her husband, so she no longer can bring those Karbanis. What is the status of those Karbanis? So the Mishnah will discuss four types of ways she could have set aside those Karbanis, so what the Lachos is in each of them. The four ways are if she set aside her husband's animals, she set aside her own animals is the second way. And the last two are if she set aside money, it could be she set aside one pile of money for all three karbanos, the carbon oila, chatos, and shlamim that another brings at the end of his naziris, or that she set aside individual piles of money for each of them, each one, each pile of money set aside for a specific carbon. Now generally the halachas of a carbon that are cancelled are as follows. The chatos, which no longer need, is needed to be brought, the animal or the money still is Kedusha's chatos, and now it can't be brought because you cannot volunteer, cannot d- 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 donate a chatos, and therefore it has to be destroyed. An oil and a shlamim could be brought voluntarily, you could volunteer an oil or a shlamim even if you have no obligation, so even though she no longer has an obligation, she could still bring the oil and the shlamim. Problem is, is, is it going to have the halachos of a shalmei nazir and an oilas nazir? We'll have the halachos of a regular oila and a regular shlamim since she's not bringing it for Naziris anymore. So let's see the mission. So the mission says if it was her husband's animals that she set aside, then her husband has canceled her Naziris. He no longer gave her the rights to use the karbanis. Retroactively, she never had the right to be makdashit. The hektish is completely void and all the animals go back to being cool. If, however, it was her animal, then it still retains kedusha. So the carbon chatas has to be left to die. It still has Kedusha's Chatos, but you can't bring it as a carbon Chatos, and you can't take the Kedusha off. While the Oila and the Shlamim, you could bring as a voluntary Oila and Shlamim. The Halacha of the Shlamim is the Halacha partially of Shalmi Nazir and partially of a regular Shlamim. It's like Shalmi Nazir in that, that it's eaten for a day and a night, not a second day. A regular Shlamim, you get a second day. A Shalmi Nazir, you don't. However, it's not like a regular, it's not like a Shalmei Nazir, because a Shalmei Nazir has to be brought with special breads. This one is not brought with any of those breads. Now, the mission discusses what happens if she set aside money. So if she set aside just a big pile of money, she didn't specify which part of the pile will be for Chatas, which for Ayla, which for Shlamim. So then you could bring them all as a carbon uh, Ayla and Shlamim, which you could bring voluntarily. You don't have to worry about the Chatas. If, however, she set aside a specific pile for the chatas, that money has to be destroyed, so it has to be thrown into the Yama Melech. The oil pile and the shlamim pile could be used to bring a voluntary oil and shlamim, and it's the same alachos. The shlamim gets only eaten for one day and a night, but you don't have to bring breads with it. We now begin the Gemara, which introduces a Machlekes Tanaim and a Machlekes Amaraim, which of these two Tanaim is the Tana of our Mishnah. The Machlekes Tanaim is as follows. Is the husband obligated to provide for his wife's karbonis? So, Machlech is Rabbi Yehuda and the Chachamim. According to Rabbi Yehuda, a husband is obligated to provide for his wife's karbonis because he writes her in the Ksuba, any obligation that you have, I'm going to take the, the obligation for you. And even if his wife is poor and the husband is rich, and it's a carbon that has different chayuvim for the rich and the poor, it goes with the chayuv of the husband because he's the one who has to provide it. That's Rabbi Yehuda's shita. The Chachamim say, no, the husband does not have to provide a karbonis for his wife. It's her obligation. And therefore, if she takes his animals for her karbonis, there's no kedusha on it. Now, there's two versions of what this Machlekes Amaraim is as to who's the Tan of our Mishnah. The first one, simply, Rabbi Chizda says the Tan of our Mishnah must be Rabbi Yehuda, because the Tan of our Mishnah clearly says that the husband was obligated to provide his wife's karbanas. That's why Rav Chizah says fakert. Rav Chizah says the town of our Mishnah is the sheet of the Rabbanon. Because in our Mishnah, it's clear that the husband did not have an obligation to provide his wife's karbanas. That's why when the wife was makdish, the animals, they don't get kedusha. And if the naziris is cancelled, the animals can go back to being chulin, and there's no issues, because the kedushin, the kedusha of the wife does not apply. However, according to Yehuda, the husband is obligated, and therefore when the wife has makdash animals, it is chal, and it should say hektash, it shouldn't be a difference whether it was his animals or her animals, either way it's obligated to her. 
That's if Chazza's opinion. Rava disagrees. Rava says no. Even Rabbi Yehuda only said that the husband is mechayiv in a case where the where the actual obligation continues and exists. And therefore, the hektish that she did still applies, and therefore it has to go. The chatas has to be uh, left to die, and the elon shlom have to be brought. However, um, in our case where there is no chiv anymore, the chiv is cancelled, there, even Rabbi Huda would agree that he, she has no right to take the animals from her husband. And therefore, the hektish that she did is never chal and it's meaningless. Now, this is the first version. The second version goes as follows. Rabbi Chizda says that the author of the Raisa, the author of our Mishnah is Rabbi Huda. And it has to be Rabbi Huda, because if it would be the Rabbanon, the Rabbanon say that the wife has no obligation the wife has no right, the husband has no obligation, and the wife has no right to take his animals at all. And therefore, it wouldn't matter whether the vow of an Aziris was cancelled or not, the Kedusha wouldn't be chal. She took her husband's animals, and she has no right to it. So obviously, it's Rabbi Huda, and Rabbi Huda is holding that in this case, Dafka, because it's cancelled, the husband's obligation falls off, and the hectic that she did does not apply, like Rava said in the last version. Um, however, uh, if it would be a regular chiv, which stands, then the husband's animals could be used for hektish, and the wife's hektish would apply. Now, Rava disagrees, and Rava says, no, this could even be the chachamim. How could it be the chachamim? So, simply, we have to understand this Bryce is talking about where he was makna the animal star, where he gave it to her. Even Rabbi Huda has to say that it's that he gave her the animals. That's why it doesn't make sense to say that uh, if the vow is cancelled, it's off, because he gave her the animals. So Rabbi says this Misha could be the Rabbanon, and the reason, according to the Rabbanon, that the animals go back to being chulin, if she took them, is because the husband only gave it to her, with the understanding she's going to have a chiv kabanis. Once her chiv kabanis is cancelled, the husband's giving is null, and therefore her hektish is null, and the animals go back to being chulin. However, if the kabanis still had the obligation, um, if it was her animals, then there would, the giving was never voided, and therefore the hektish still has some grip, and you still chive on it. Ingmar now refers back to the mission. Ingmar asks, it said there that if she was Makar of Karbanais, or she set aside Karbanais from her own money, where did she have her own money from? If a Roman Shakun say Isha Kana Baila, her possessions belong to her husband. So Mara answers two ways she could have had her own money. One is that he gave her money for food, which belongs to her, but she didn't spend it on food, she saved it up until she bought Karbanais. The second answer is that she got a gift from someone else that was given to her on the condition that it belongs to her and not to her husband. A case like that, it goes to her and not to her husband, and she uses that money or those animals for carbonus. Right, now the Gemara refers to the halacha that we saw in the Mishnah, that the carbonus shlamim that's brought in a case where the carbon was cancelled, you bring a voluntary shlamim, and it has the halacha of uh, shalmi nazir that you only get one day and one night, but it does not have breads with it. So the Gemara says... How is it possible that you have a split halacha? If it's Shalmi Nazir, it should have breads. If it's not Shalmi Nazir, it should have two days and a night. So Gemara says that Shmuel said to Bar Ihi, don't sit down until you explain this to me. So he said it's very simple. We have a Mishnah that says that there are four cases of a carbon that was canceled for a Nazir. And in all four, you have this halacha that it has Shalmi is it has a split halacha you get only one day and one night but you don't have to bring the breads what are the four cases so the mishnah lists them as his hers after the death and after kapara so hers we know hers is this case we've been discussing in our mishnah where she had karbanis and then her husband was me for her his this is first where somebody made a nether naziris on his son and then it was cancelled. The halacha is that a man could make a vow of naziris for his son. A woman cannot make for her son. However, the son could protest against it and cancel it, or other relatives could protest against it or cancel it. So if the son shaves his head or others shave his head, or if he protests verbally or others, other relatives protest verbally for him, in all those cases the carbon is cancelled. And if the carbonus was already set aside, so if it was a pile of money that could be used for all the carbonus, then it's used for the oila. 
and it's used for the shlamim. If it was a speci- if there was one that was specified, if they're all specified, so then the chatas has to go to the avamelach. The oil is brought from oil, and the shlamim is the shlamim. And again, it has this halacha only one day and one night, but it does not require lechem. Now this mishnah spells out, and our mishnah before also said that there's no meila because you can't have enough from this money or from these animals because they have kedusha, but there's no meila because they can't because they're not brought. Uh, as real um, carbonus until you're makdish them. So the m- money that was set aside has no din hana, can't be nana from it, but there's no din me'il. Alright, so that's the case of his. Now, what's the case of after Misa? Because this is where somebody set aside money for his nazir carbonus. Could either be, again, one big pile or three small piles, and this time he died before he got a chance to bring it. So again, the halacha is that uh, if it's a big pile, it's used as a shalmim and ayla. If it's a small pile, the chatas goes to the yam and melech, the shalmim is brought, the ayla is brought, and it's only for one day, and there's no breads with it. And then the last case is where he brought other kabanis. He had set aside this money for these kabanis, but he brought other kabanis. So logically, this is the same as if he died, these kabanis no longer needed. So those are the four situations. So the Gemara asks that there should be a fifth one. There should be a fifth situation in which the Kabbanas are a split halacha. It has a din of Shalmei Nazir, but no breads. And that's if it was brought Shalei Lishma. You brought a regular Shlamim for a Nazir, but it was Shachted, not Lishma, not Lashem Naziris. So the halacha there is that it's kosher, but it does not count for the, for the owner, for the carbon that he needs. He has to bring another one. So there, the halacha also is that he has only one day, like a regular carbon and nazir, but he doesn't have to bring the breads because it's not worth anything for him anyway. So why don't we list that in the Mishnah? It's also another case where you have uh, one day and no breads. And where it says, no, we were only talking about cases where the mitzvah was done properly, not where the thing was done wrong.